Port-au-Prince still has people, more than two million of them perhaps, but it has little else, which is why anyone who can is fleeing town. This was the central bus station this morning. People are fighting to get out, back to their villages in the countryside perhaps, but unsure of what they'll find when they get there. Why is everyone leaving? Because cause the trouble, because they have no place to, to stay for in, in Port-au-Prince right now, because they are, they are going in their country to fight medical man, people get sick. They're going back to their villages, dying, yeah. And they move back. That's why they are leaving, because cause the problem. Are you going to stay or leave? No, I'm going to leave very soon. You can see his point. We went on our own tour of the capital this morning, and what we found was a city and a people left to their own meager resources. This was the central business district. With their houses destroyed, crumbling or cracked, everyone has spilled onto the streets. Everyone is trying to get food, water, shelter. Those who can't move end up here at the general hospital. The wards are full if they haven't been destroyed and so the patients have been left out in the open. Delphine tries to keep the flies away from her stump. She lost her left foot when her home collapsed. It has now turned gangrenous. Did she have any medical attention from anyone since coming here Tuesday night? No is the answer here. And here. And here. We spent an hour at the hospital and in that time we saw not a single nurse or doctor. Life is slowly draining away from these people. In many cases it has stopped to drain. The still alive and the already dead share the precious shade in this field hospital of horrors. So meet the citizen surgeons of Haiti trying to keep their relatives alive. Not surprisingly, insanity is finding its voice. Outside our tour continues. There is some evidence of looting now. And the police is getting twitchy fully prepared for violence in a country that has seen too much of it over the years. So what he's just been telling me is that a lot of the policemen have died and there are quite a few armed gangs around which they're worried about, which is what they're trying to look out for here. So what about the authorities, the organs of state? This was the Supreme Court. This, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. We've gone to see what's left of the government district, and so have they. It's a familiar scene anywhere. Crowds gathering to see the residence of their president. This here is, or rather was, the White House of Haiti. The president survived. He's taken up residence at the airport, but his government has ceased to function. This was the Senate building. Anyone can go in, so we did, and made a grim discovery. Corpses of Senate staffers in body bags, waiting to be noticed. At the end of the road, the remains of the cathedral. The Archbishop's palace has become the Archbishop's tomb. His body is inside, and the rescue workers, the only ones we've seen all day, think that two people are still alive, three floors down. Across the road, we found this. So this is it, what was once perhaps the most beautiful building in Haiti, Our Lady of the Assumption, the main cathedral here in the capital. It's over a century old. It took over 30 years to build, but just 30 seconds to destroy. Some aid is getting through from the airport to the streets. We found this bread line, heavily policed by UN soldiers from Bolivia. But will desperation turn into violence, and when? It is another question to add to the long list of unknowns here. Help is arriving at the airport. There is no shortage of goodwill from the international community. But what the second oldest republic in the Western Hemisphere needs is to be rebuilt from scratch. <laughs>